My name is Dr. Philip Anderson. I'm a professor in the Department of Evolution, Ecology, and Behavior at the University of Illinois. Uh, my lab is an evolutionary biomechanics lab. And our main interest is in how the laws of physics and mechanics have influenced biological evolution over the last billion years of Earth's history. So originally, I was actually trained as a paleontologist. And one of the things I was interested in is how we understand anything about an extinct organism lives. Eventually, through a series of other projects I did as a postdoc, I became really interested in puncture. And puncture is fascinating because so many different things in biology puncture for so many different reasons. When I first began this research, a lot of the focus was on the organisms that were puncturing. Um, they tend to be the very charismatic ones, snakes, wasps, and that sort of thing. But as we've gone on, we've realized we have to start thinking more and more about what it is they're puncturing. So we've begun trying to think about, well, what are the fundamental aspects of these target materials and how does that influence the puncturing organism's ability to puncture them? Or how the target organism can actually resist that puncture in some cases. One of the first um, studies we've done to try to get at that is to look at a very basic aspect of the target material, which is that most biological materials have multiple layers to them. So if you look at something, for instance, trying to get into your arm, a mosquito or a, a bee stinging you, it has to get through your skin, um, potentially some sort of fat layer underneath before it can get to, for instance, the muscles and things. And each of those materials has different material properties. They're all made of different things. So what we did in this project was say, well, let's start with just making a bilayered structure. Um, we use a silicon gel as our target because we can control the material properties really well. And so we made a bilayered silicone gel where we had an outer layer that was stiffer and tougher than the underlying layer to see if having that tougher outer layer, even if it was really thin, would actually prevent um, the, punc the puncturing tool from getting as deep. And that is what we found actually, that having even a thin layer of a stiffer material really reduced uh, the depth of puncture at variable speed. Thankfully, at the University of Illinois, we have a meat science department from which we were able to get specimens of um, basically pork that had the skin, fat, and muscle layers all intact. And so we tested some of those. And particularly what we wanted to test was how effective was the pig skin at resisting puncture, because the pig skin was thinner than any of the silicon uh, skin layers we made. And so we did, we tested the pork with the skin and then we took the skin off to just have the fat layer. And what we found is that the pig skin was better at resisting the puncture than any of the silicones we had made. I think we knew it would still be effective. The idea that it was more effective because we had actually tuned the uh, silicon to have the same general properties as pig skin. That's what we were aiming for. We were trying to mimic its stiffness and everything. So the fact that the pig skin was thinner and still did better, um, when initially we thought that was interesting. When we thought about it a bit, we realized potentially not surprising. What we think is probably happening is the silicon is still basically a silicon gel. So it doesn't really have a microstructure to it. Pig skin is a dense mesh of collagen fibers. And as the puncture tool is trying to get through that, it is breaking individual collagen fibers. And every time it does that, that takes energy. And that's energy being taken away from the puncturing projectile. So I think it's likely slowing it down by having these individual fibers, which when they break, that doesn't mean the projectile can get through. The projectile has to break a lot of fibers to actually get through. So I think it has something to do with that microstructure. There's a number of reasons why we're interested in this. One reason, the more reason that we work with a lot of engineers is that there is still a lot of interest in understanding what can be done to resist puncture. So there's all sorts of products that are made, um, types of body armor, things like that, and trying to understand how the biological world deals with these sorts of challenges can give us, the field is called bioinspiration, can sort of inspire us to, oh, well, what can we do with our more synthetic um, products? On a more biological level, I am really interested in the evolution of these systems and this sort of almost arms race you're gonna have between the organism trying to puncture and the target of that puncture and how much that has driven the evolution of these groups. Again, going back to parasitoid wasps, 
they're actually one of the most speciose groups of insects, which are already a massively diverse group of organisms. And parasitoids are potentially so diverse because they all have very specific types of materials they're trying to puncture. So has that driven this massive diversity of the group? We speculate that there's a good likelihood, but that's something that we want to test moving forward.